Hello, I'm Adam and today I will show you a great idea for Christmas lights using addressable LEDs. We've got uh, three most popular options nowadays. The first one is the original ESP32 Vroom. It's the very first ESP32. It's named as original. Uh, generally it has two cores, uh, 240 MHz and it has the maximum support because it was first and uh, yeah, it's most stable I would say. And uh, next option which is uh, compatible is uh, ESP C3 Mini and uh, generally just don't look on them because there is only one core and yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, it's not worth to switching from something uh, greatly supported to something uh, less supported because of, yeah, there is no reasons. Unlike in the S3 Mini, because uh, ESP32 S3 Mini has uh, two cores, but uh, it's newer generation and uh, generally overall performance should be better in ESP32 S3 Mini. Those are from uh, Lolin, the VMOS boards. So uh, summarizing, uh, we've got the original one, we've got the something newer but not better, and uh, something newer and better but without uh, that great uh, support yet, because those are pretty new comparing to the original one. Uh, so which one to choose? Uh, well, uh, in my case, the Christmas tree, I plan uh, 600 LEDs uh, for the Christmas tree and uh, 62 for the star on the tip. Uh, so, uh, and I want to have a big FPS and uh, I want to have audio reactive, so the uh, LEDs will uh, react to the audio plate. So I went for the S3 Mini because I believe I will have more performance. <laughs> and yeah, that's it about it. Okay, now let's install the Villet on ESP32. And uh, to do this, I will use a uh, original install.villet.me. Uh, it's a uh, original uh, installer. So just now I will connect the ESP32 and I press magic button install. Then I have to select which uh, COM port is addressed to the ESP32 and uh, in my case uh, this one looks uh, exactly how the ESP looks like. I press connect and now it's connecting and uh, now we've got the device dashboard that means it got connected and we can press magic button install VLED and I will confirm install. And then uh, it's preparation installation and uh, it might start now, but if it won't, it will show a, a warning. And as you can see, it got failed because uh, the ESP32 was not in the uh, flashing mode, I hope. Uh, so uh, I will unplug the ESP and now I will connect the ESP and I will uh, press, uh, I've got two buttons, I will press boot and enable, so uh, boot enable one tap and I'm still holding the boot and now I will uh, release the uh, boot and as you can see it started. So that's the correct order if we've got problems. Uh, it depends on the ESP version because some of them got automated some doesn't and yeah, it will take two minutes. And now we've got installation complete, we press next. And now we have opportunity to configure our Wi-Fi network. So uh, we can just do it now, because why not? Now I press connect and the device got connected to the network. Now if I press visit device, I've got uh, clean uh, VLED uh, instance and yeah, it will work. Uh, okay, so what next we should uh, go if we've got installed it successfully? Uh, yeah, I know regarding hardware everything is not connected yet, but let's go with the config. And we'll go to LED preferences 
and uh, now uh, there we've got the uh, current limiter uh, so we can limit the brightness uh, to um, avoid uh, overheating etc etc but uh, we are interested in uh, LED type there are plenty of them in my case it's uh, WS2815 so I just uh, set the first option and there I can set which LED I've got so this one exactly and how many of the LEDs and in my case it will be uh, around 300 because uh, I will split my LEDs uh, to uh, two strings uh, even three strings I will show you later because uh, in uh, if you've got less uh, LEDs on a string you can have more FPS and I, I'm referring you about this uh, to very nice guide which showed a very nice uh, table and as we can see if we will have around 300 LEDs per controller per pin uh, we'll have around 111 FPS per second which is a lot and uh, with 600 we could be under 60 so uh, it's better to have, uh, yeah, anyway, it's better to have less on a uh, pin because anyway, we'll have inject a voltage. I will show you later how I did that. And okay, so if uh, we've got uh, everything set, uh, color order RGB is uh, correct for me. And we have to press save. And uh, additional thing, uh, if you want uh, to set up uh, audio reactive, uh, we can go to user modes and uh, there is a uh, audio reactive section we just press enable and uh, generic i2s is fine and we specify which pins we've got there uh, as you can see we can select anything so that's great uh, only i would uh, warn you about pin 2 because it's required for booting so don't touch it and uh, yeah just you can take anyone and if you press save and uh, yeah now we should see in the info that there is a audio reactive panel so there is our uh, uh, gain uh, knob i would name it and uh, yeah that's how it should work of course nothing is connected uh, so uh, let's move to the connection what i've done <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah that's how i did that um well, 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 uh, what we've got there? Uh, we've got there a step-down converter, which is uh, set for 5 volt and is uh, applying 5 volts to the ESP board. Uh, 5 volts because uh, there is a buffer. I will show a schematic how to connect the buffer. Uh, because with those LEDs you need a buffer because the LEDs are uh, data pin is on the 5 volt logic level ESP of course is 3.3 uh, uh, volt uh, logic and uh, that's how that's why I needed a, a buffer uh, yes there is a, one thing a bit controversial because as you can see there is antenna from this side and I'm covering it uh, almost half. Uh, well, I'm close to the access point and I choose a uh, minimalism instead of a uh, performance. But I must say, uh, in my case, I didn't felt like something is lagging or anything. So I think that's fine. Yeah, but be aware of that if uh, you will have more space or you can uh, organize it somehow better. Just be aware of that. You shouldn't cover the antenna part uh, in any way. Yeah. And as we can see, there are resistors, three resistors uh, from the uh, from the level shifter. Uh, those are 100 ohms resistors and I used them to uh, filter some noises in the data pin because uh, the wires are pretty long, so I saw a recommendation that you should use a resistor. And regarding uh, cables, let me change the focus. And let's start with the microphone. Uh, it's model uh, ENMP441. Uh, 
Uh, it's uh, I2S uh, microphone, so it's great, it's digital. And uh, yeah, generally I just have wired it. Uh, uh, the re uh, cable recommendation length is up to 30 centimeters. You can have it without any problems. And yeah, I can confirm it's working okay. Uh, so I've got like this cable. Next I've got, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, there is a socket uh, and where all those uh, three resistor outputs are going and those are going to three four pin uh, sockets and uh, those are uh, those are going to the LED strip directly uh, why three plugs because I divided uh, the whole Christmas tree for uh, three uh, groups one is the first uh, 300 LEDs, uh, it's like from the half to bottom. Second is from the half to top, uh, about 300 LEDs. And uh, third is the whole tip, uh, which has uh, 62 LEDs, but uh, yeah, it's on the tip, so I wanted to have a lot of FPS because I wanted a great effect, <laughs> whatever. And uh, yeah, that's how it looks like. Uh, yeah, maybe that's not ideal, but anyway, it's behind the Christmas tree, so I don't care. And oh, this another plug is just a power injection uh, to the uh, top of the Christmas tree. Because uh, in those LEDs you have to uh, inject power uh, every some period, some distance. In my case, I in, I've got 30 meters of LEDs. I injected in about half and I injected about the end of this uh, 30 meter long strip and uh, this plug is for the end and uh, other plug is for the middle because I'm starting new string so I injected power additionally yeah and uh, everything is connected using uh, yeah there I've got one square millimeter cable in total and XT60 connector which is connected to minimal power supply uh, 12 volts and in my case it's 8 amps and uh, yeah so summarizing in total I've got 662 LEDs and those are consuming maximally 61 watts at 100% brightness so the power supply is correctly chosen yeah so uh, and that looks like that's it thanks for watching please leave a comment and have fun <laughs> bye